Resident Evil 7 is coming to the Switch. Kind of. And only in Japan. So in Japan, they released the Resident Evil 7 Cloud Edition, which is basically Resident Evil 7 on your Switch via a streaming service, very similar to PlayStation Now, or if you remember back in the day, there was a service called OnLive. And a lot of people are talking about how this is the future, or could potentially be the future, of Switch games. And there, I, I see where people are coming from, where it looks like a means to get higher end games, games that are designed for the Xbox One, your PS4s, your PCs, onto a lower powered Switch system. But I don't think that's the future. And that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, some are technical, some are financial. So right now, and a lot of these streaming services, which really, they're really the only streaming service that's around right now is PlayStation Now. And the way that you pay for these things is you don't just buy the game and then you get to stream it on all your devices forever. You kind of rent them. It's more of a subscription-based service. You know, you pay, you know, $6 and you get to play the game for, I don't even remember what it was. It was like for 18 hours or 24 hours, or you can pay $20 to, to play it for seven days, an entire week. And that's because that this game is rendered on the servers and in the cloud that these company that have to pay for it. And there's ongoing costs there. So at least right now, this type of streaming service is not a, you buy the game once you get to play it forever. That's going to be an ongoing cost. It's either going to be more of like a rental type situation where you pay for X amount of hours or days, or it's going to be like a subscription thing where you pay X amount of dollars per month and then you get like a, an entire library and stuff. Uh, and then on top of that, you're still stuck with the technical limitations of the internet. Latency and lag are the main things that people are concerned about with these streaming services and the main thing that people actually experience with these streaming services. You can't, as for certainly competitive type games, this is not going to work for competitive type games. Uh, there's just there's there's too much latency, and I don't think you're ever going to be able to get around that, even on the fastest, the fastest of connections, where you know the server is right down the street and you have a direct connection to it. You're still looking at adding several milliseconds worth of latency. If you're on Wi-Fi, that's adding not just a little bit more latency, but you're adding more instability to the connection. That's another big thing is making making sure you have a, a good stable connection. Then on top of that, the way these things work is the game gets rendered on the server in the cloud, and then a video stream of that gets sent back to your device so that you can see what's actually happening. Well, that video needs to be encoded, compressed, sent over the internet, then decompressed, and you're never, well, I'm not going to say never. It, today, you're not going to get the same visual fidelity you would get of actually just rendering it on a local machine and sending it over an uncompressed signal to your TV. That's the, uh, Those are the main technical limitations there of why I don't think just game streaming in general is either a long ways away or never going to happen. On top of that, the Switch, one of the main uh, selling points of the Switch is that not only is it a home console, but it's also portable. And so you can take it with you. And there's no way in the heck you're going to get a decent gaming experience on, say, like a mobile LTE cellular connection. If you even connect your Switch to a cellular connection, you're going to have to hook it up to like a hotspot or you put your phone in hotspot mode. So this type of gaming on Switch, I think, is not... It's not, it's not that it's not going to happen. I think developers are going to try. People are really trying. Sony really wants to make this streaming thing happen. But I, oh, let me put it this way. I don't know a single person that even, I really don't know many people that even know about PlayStation now. I know even fewer people, as in none, that actually have tried it. And I know even fewer people, if you can get less than zero, I don't know if you can do less than zero. Even, even fewer people even want a streaming type service. So 
this whole Resident Evil 7 thing streaming onto the Switch via cloud service, um, I think, well, first of all, it's Japan only. It's only in Japan right now, and I don't think we're going to see it outside of Japan. I think nobody, no matter how fast their internet is, no matter how good a connection they get, even though it's not a competitive game where latency is less of an issue, I think the experience is going to be not nearly as good that people would expect from this type of thing. First of all, I think it's something like you got to pay like $18 and you get it for 180 days. So you don't even get to like, you can't even just buy the game and play it. You basically have to rent it for a a fairly long period of time. So I don't think it's going to make it outside of Japan. I don't think game streaming in general is going to take off probably ever, but definitely not anytime soon. Um, I remember, so I have a, uh, I have a PlayStation Vita and, and a PlayStation 4. And one of the big uh, selling points or one of the big features of the Vita was that the, you could do remote play from the Vita to the PlayStation 4. So you could play your PlayStation 4 games on your Vita streaming the whole game experience. And even on the same network as the PlayStation 4, in my, in my home, on the same network, it... It wasn't a terrible experience. It just wasn't a great experience. And it was even it, it was even less of a great experience act- over the actual internet. So if like I was out out and about uh, over at a local Wi-Fi, say at like a coffee shop or something or on my cell phone or wherever, it doesn't matter what type of internet connection it was. If it was outside of my home, it was an even less good experience. So I think with these game streaming things, the best case scenario would be in home. And then at that point, why not just go over to the actual console and play it? But it, uh, for this, this whole switch thing and resident evil seven and game streaming in general over the internet, it's, it's not, it's not a great experience. It's definitely, at least in my opinion, the experience is not worth the asking price. These things are typically subscription or time limited. Um, if if it were like a uh, like a fifteen, twenty, even thirty dollar purchase, a one time purchase, and then you got to play it streaming forever, yeah, I could see a lot of people giving it a try. Maybe dealing with the with the less good experience for something for something like Resident Evil Seven, if they can get. The entire network end to end, if they can make it, yeah, you're going to have some lag and stuff, but if they can make it an otherwise pretty much flawless experience, I'd see some people going for that, but I would much rather just, just buy a, if I wanted it on the Switch, I would just buy a graphically less, uh, a lower graphical fidelity. I would I would I would take a less graphically intense experience if I can just have it the actual cartridge if I could play it without an internet connection you know one of the biggest one of the biggest um attractions for me for the switch was being able to play games on an airplane and you know it's you know good luck getting an internet connection up there Yes, airplanes have Wi-Fi and stuff, but it, if you've ever tried to use it, first of all, you gotta usually have to pay money for it, and it's not that great. It's there was one time I had a decent airplane internet experience. It was free. The Wi-Fi was free. It actually worked pretty decent, but that was one time. Most of the time, it's pretty sucky. Latency is usually quite high. You know, a lot of times they use satellite internet, that sort of thing. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, Switch. Oh, yeah, Switch. So playing games on an airplane. That's a really, really big draw for me. And, you know, the Switch, yes, it's lower powered than other consoles. It's definitely lower powered than a PC. But it's not that bad. If you look at the games that have been released so far on the Switch, especially if you look at, like, ports of games that have come from the previous generation of consoles, they're... They're pretty close to, say, like an Xbox 360 or PS4. And in some cases, they're better. So, for example, um, L.A. Noir uh, runs at 1080p on the Switch. And it's got a few graphical enhancements over the, uh, the, the Xbox 360 and the PS3 versions. And, you know, you could attribute that to uh, uh, advances in software and, and programming and development and that sort of thing. But 
from what I've seen so far, the Switch is actually pretty comparable in raw performance to an Xbox 360 or a PS3. And those consoles, you there were some really good games for those consoles. There was if if you really think about it, if you go back and compare like a like a PS3 to a PS4, yeah, the PS4 is going to have better graphics. PS4 Pro, you know, even more so. But the gaming experience isn't that much different from the from that previous generation. Yeah, you're going to have, you know, things this generation, you're going to have 1080p or 4K, you're going to have higher resolution textures, all this kind of stuff. But the actual games themselves don't play much different. You know, if you look back at uh you know, PS2, PS1, N64, even you know, even further back than that. The, the gaming experience changed dramatically over those generations. There are games that were released on the PS3 that even if you dumbed down the graphics, it still couldn't run on the PS2. Uh, Skyrim is an example. I, I, now, I'm not a developer, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a, a, a video console engineer type person, but I would bet dollars to donuts even if you dumb down the graphics, you would have a pretty hard time, if not an impossible time, to get Skyrim to run on a PS2. Even with dumb down graphics. So, my point is, yeah, they have sharper graphics, they got higher resolution graphics, they, maybe you can fit more characters on the screen or whatever, but your gaming experience isn't that much different from a PS3 to a PS4, or an Xbox 360 to an Xbox One, and with the Switch being pretty comparable to an Xbox 360 or a PS3, I mean, yeah, games that you want to port over or you want to create new, you know, like, like a Resident Evil 7, for example, yeah, the graphics aren't going to be as good, but your gaming experience, you can make pretty much the same. Like, you can, you can still do all those th- same things. I mean, like, yeah, they, they imported Skyrim to the Switch. And it's pretty dang close to the Xbox 360 PS3. Like, it's actually pretty dang close to the defin- uh, definitive? Was it definitive? I can't. Whatever the re-release was for the, the, the X-Bone and the PS4. Yeah, the graphic. Yeah, they're not, not as sharp, high, not as high resolution. But your gaming experience is pretty much the same thing. And so I think that's where, that's where developers should put their time is... Getting these games on the Switch, yeah, not as good a graphics as, as you know, your PS4 or your X-Bone, but the added ability to play these things on the go, and for me, playing on an airplane, playing in an airport, those are the times, at least that I can think of, that I really want a full-on gaming experience. Is Those are the times... Because when you know when you go to the airport, there's a lot of waiting around. Air travel, there's a whole. And I could I could, I could spend a whole time to talking about how much waiting around there is in air travel. But those are the times that I, I I want these things. I want I want to go back. I want some of the best traveling experiences I had was with my Vita playing Metal Gear Solid Two. Because Metal Gear Solid Two is a great game when you just have nothing. Because you know there's cutscenes out the wazoo in that thing. You can just chill there. You can play your games. And it's it you can you, you don't have to worry about it you know it's just you just sit there you play your games you watch your cutscenes and it's it's a great it's a great time killer um, so in conclusion Resident Evil Seven Cloud Edition on the Nintendo Switch I think it's not going to make it outside of Japan I think game streaming in general is not the future I think people you know they've been trying this for a long time. And nobody, nobody wants it. Yeah, technology is getting better. Technology is going to get better in the future. Could they make it a decent experience in the future? Yeah, maybe, but I, it's, it's, I don't. If if it happens, and I don't think it will, but if it happens, it's going to be, it's going to be many years in the future. So, everyone talking about how uh, game streaming is the future of the Nintendo Switch, of, of getting these higher-end games onto the Switch. I don't, I don't see it. I don't think it's going to happen. The, the infrastructure expense is too high. The gaming experience is too low compared to just get, you know, a normal gaming experience on the machine itself. Um, this is six months. This thing is going to, the plug is going to get pulled. That's all. <laughs>